Now, the Round Ball Wrap on KEZI 9 News. Welcome into episode three of Round Ball Lab. Join, Round Ball Wrap, excuse me. <laughs> Joined alongside Brett Taylor. I'm Nick Ursini. Crazy week here in the Willamette Valley. Cancellations, weather. You were one of them. You were on vacation last week. Yeah. You kind of had an extended vacation hanging out wherever you were. Yeah. But nice to be back. Um, boy, did we have some basketball games though as well. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, we're grateful to just have some going on. Of course, all the schools that weren't able to participate, some of those games being canceled. But hey, it's high school basketball. It's Friday. It's it's a good day. Yeah, a lot of teams that we normally have on the air, North Eugene, South Eugene, Churchill, they're not playing today, but we did have some 6A action, and we'll start as we head down I-5. Willamette taking on Roseburg, home of the Indians. Great crowd there. Thanks again, Billy Hanning, for heading down there. Here's the boys, Owen Bentia, sinking threes as well. Micah Mendoza, he had a great night as well. Willamette trying to fire back, though. Jacob Hall sinks a couple threes. So does Braden Long. He's notorious for those threes. But Roseburg has a commanding lead, and they take the win, 86-55. to And on the girls' side, Willamette also with a huge lead at halftime. Isabella Harms, one of the main reasons why, sinking a couple threes back-to-back. -back. She was on fire, and then Victoria win. Joining in on the fun for the corner pocket three, it's a splash party in Roseburg as Maddie Wahlberg joins in the fun. It feels like that Willamette didn't even miss a single three in this game. Roseburg trying to fight bad as, back as best as they can, but it was too little, too late as Willamette gets the dub, the final 79-12 Wolverines. In 5A, the Scots feeling good on the road, leading at halftime against Lebanon. Third quarter, McKay trying to keep up the pressure. Dennis Bondar fade away three from the corner pocket, and he puts it in, nothing but net right there. What a shot by the junior. Warriors trying to come back. Scott's slow to get back in transition. Nice ball movement, nice cut, easy bucket. Lebanon hanging in there and slowly chipping away at that McKay lead, but it would not be enough as the Scots get the win 66 to 60. Over to the girls, first quarter, Izzy Allydice drives through the lane and goes off the glass through two defenders. Later in the first, it's Emma Juarez in transition and she's just gonna take it herself. Bank was open late in Lebanon. Warriors not done. Ashlyn Fontanos finds Taryn Cornell. She gets past the defense and finishes inside. Moments later, Cornell gets the steal and takes it home. Lebanon gets the win at home, 49-42. Crescent Valley boys hosting the Central Panthers. First points of the night belong to Anthony Castro. Boy, he's a sharpshooter. Four to three central leads. CV breaking the press. Castro to Jacob Yenchik to Jeffrey Sand. Sand, I thought you'd throw it down, but don't worry, young fella. You'll have plenty of more chances. Then Leaf licking staff a three-point play, but the Panthers beat the Raiders on the road 51 to 41. Crescent Valley girls were on the road. They win big 61 to 37 over at Central High School. How about some 4A ball? The Cougars from Cascade entering the den of the Huskies in Sweet Home. First quarter we go in Sweet Home in a little bit of a trouble. Turn the ball overs. Breezy Hampton coast to coast finishes with the easy laid up and the Cougs are in control early moments later. Cascade gets another turnover. Maddie Dustin, nice no look pass to Olivia Bennett who finishes at the rim. Huskies still scoreless and Cougs looking to extend the lead. It's Dustin from three, bang. Cascade cruises the final 76-15 Cougars. Over on the boys side, the Huskies crowning themselves early. Maybe a little preview, maybe not. Taking on the hot shooting hand of Cascade Huskies. Trailing early on, only down by two, and it's Vegas Mauer, the senior, letting it fly from range, splash. Sweet Home takes the early lead in the first, and that's where it end, because off the rebound, Huskies trying to push too quickly. Turn on over, Caden Ford to Anthony Best, the slam. And that's all she wrote. Cougars get the win, 72 to 40. Over to Philomath, 10 and three Warriors hosting the eight and three Newport Cubs. We'll pick things up in the fourth quarter. Warriors were up by 20. Preston Kramer drives the lane a little up and under. Count it and the foul. Moments later, Kramer gets the steal at midcourt and he gets the finish at the rim. Newport though, they took a long way to get all the way out there to Philomath. They're trying to get back into it. Aiden Bakuro with the reverse layup, but the Warriors stayed in control. CD Nuno hits the three and Philomath wins big at home, 57 to 33 over Newport. And keeping it in Philomath and the Newport girls to cap off that double header out of Highway 34. First quarter, loose ball finds its way out to Emily Tonasilla who banks home the tray. Warriors started this one with a 9-0 run. 
It's the Haley Mason gets Newport on the board with a three right there. Warriors though, moving the ball. They get it to Reagan Heiken who rattles it in off the glass. And then it's Tonicilla working on defense now, gets the steal, kicks it ahead to Zoe Howard and Palomith gets the sweep. The final 65-23 Warriors over the Cubs. Coming up after the break, we're gonna transition from to 3A. Coquille, Sutherland, and Santium Christian highlights are all up next on Round Ball Wrap. Round Ball Wrap on KEZI 9 News is sponsored by Abbey's Legendary Pizza and Eugene True Value. Abby says thank you to our thousands of pizza-loving friends from our first 60 years. From our family to yours, thank you. See the road. See your family. your life. See us, Dr. Spine, Hoffman, and Sims. Now is the perfect time to get a big deal on a brand new Honda. Honda is Kelly Blue Book's KBB.com best value brand. That means deals on Pilot, on CRV, on HRV, on Accord, on Civic, and the rest of the Honda lineup. And right now, well-qualified buyers can get 3.9% APR financing on the Honda Pilot or HRV. But don't wait. For big deals on America's best brand, hurry into your Southern Oregon Honda dealer today. True Value Hardware is here to restore, repair, and improve your number one investment, your home. Anything you need for home improvement or weekend repairs is here at your locally owned Eugene True Value Hardware. Come in today to stock up on those much needed winter supplies, including antifreeze, heat de-icer, hand warmers, and everything you need to winterize your home. Keep ahead of the cold this winter with the help of Eugene True Value Hardware. Behind every project is a true value. This January, Abby's is proud to offer our classic Big Hawaiian pizza at a very special price. Abby's.com or join us in our parlor for a legendary pizza tradition. Now, the Round Ball Wrap on KEZI 9 News. Welcome back. Earlier we were talking about the bad weather and we were all up north today and driving up I-5, I saw not one but two tractor trailers that were off the road. One of them seemed like it was like 50 yards off the road with yeah. how icy it was. It was bad. I mean, just kind of talk about how bad it was for you trying to get back here. To yeah, Eugene. no, two flight cancellations. I was in Colorado where actually it was still very cold but sunny but with so many flights being canceled because of all the crazy weather mm -hmm. on the east coast and the west coast, it was just near impossible trying to find anything back here. Yeah, so it's... Uh, like I said, though, we still got a full show, so now we're going to head down to 3A. We're going to head up I-5, though. Sandy M. Christian, the Eagles, hosting the Pirates in a doubleheader. We will start with the girls. Taylor Vinson passes to Bella Vanderhoof for a corner three to open the scoring there at Sandy M. Christian High School. Off the inbounds, Vincent to Mia Fulbright off the glass. Sandy M. Christian back in front by two. One more time on the inbounds, Vincent to Ariana Boutier. Back to Vanderhoof for a three-pointer. Sandy M. Christian wins the first one, a final score 43 to 35. 20 minutes later, it's the boys' turn. The Eagles searching for their third victory of the season, and it starts with Brendan Fitzpatrick, a nice bounce pass to Steen Smith for the layup. Connor Rain to Clayton Sleggers to Josh Riddle for the jump shot. The problem was Clyde Rosenberg, number 51. He was a force all night down low for the Pirates. You can count that one. He'd make the free throw. He'd make a lot more as well. Dayton wins this one, 56 to 35. More 3A ball, Coquille, Cascade Christian. The Red Devils have been red hot all season long. Only one loss for the year. Challengers though, striking early. Jordan Jones, she dishes it to Emma Coates. Easy jump shot and nothing but net. Red Devils not used to trailing and turnovers are not going to help them out. Grace McCauley tosses it to her sister Isabel who finds Coates. And that's just good basketball right there. No doubt about it. Coquille trying to claw its way back. Emmy Wirebaugh there for the hook, but it is just not enough as the challengers run away with this one to give Coquille just their second loss of the season, the final 54-35. 
How about this doubleheader though? Cascade Christian on the boys' side hosting the Red Devils. Boyster and Payne Mauer. He's a star here in Oregon. The three to open things up. Red Devils answering right back though. Levi Hoyle to Jericho Jones. And of course, later on, it's Coquille. Jaren Franakowik finds Lane and adds to the Challengers lead. Derek Farmer ahead now to Avery Houston for the two-handed slam. Kind of here in a second. We've got a couple jump shots going on as well. This one getting away from Coquille early and in a hurry as Cascade Christian gets the win. 98 to 28, the final. On the girls' side, St. Mary's starting off slow against the Bulldogs. This one's about to change, though. Lily Jensen passes to Maddie Ward. Pull up two, easy bucket there. Later on, Ward fighting through, escapes the trap, and somehow finds some space. Ward would go on to score half of St. Mary's total points for the evening, but it's a five-person team basketball game here, and Sutherland's team defense looking strong. Madison Wagner to steal. Addison Clark back to Wagner, who goes coast to coast. Sutherland gets the easy win, 57 to 20. On the boys' side, Sutherland against St. Mary again. The duo in Cannon Anderson and Ty Zimmerman tearing up the court tonight. Zimmerman hits that three right there on your screen, and then later on, it's Anderson driving into the middle of the Sutherland defense, who's unable to stop it as he hits the easy two making it look easy later on at Zimmerman breakaway. Again, another easy layup for the Crusaders. And just one more time for this duo of the game, it's Anderson, crosses over the defender, finds Zimmerman, and a nothing but net shot. St. Mary steals the deal against Sutherland in the final 69-27. The Glide Wildcats in the house at North Valley, the Knights. Laney Wheeler getting things started for the Knights, jump shot. Makes it look easy off the glass, but the Wildcats aren't going anywhere without a fight. Ball dish to Taylor, a thing ball. She wastes no time and doesn't even watch the ball go in. It's like Steph Curry out there. Back to the Knights, ball in the hands of Wheeler. She finds Lane off the glass. It's good. The Knights win this one, the final. North Valley 42, Glide 33. Lots of doubleheaders again. The Glide boys now turn against North Valley and good ball movement for North Valley as they find Andrew Duran. Post move into the paint for two points off the glass. Knights rolling early. Later on, it's Cooper McCord putting the moves on the Wildcat. Ball in and out, but Brady Dabowski is there on for the putback. Dabowski, another spin move right there, and it's just too hard to stop as the Knights get the dub 54 to 40 over Glide. How about some other scores around 3A? Douglas wins big over Brookings Harbor, 73 to 41. And then the girls, big one for Brookings Harbor, 48 to to five. Not a score that you see often right there. Over in 2A, the Oakers still stay undefeated. 17-0 now after getting a 73-42 victory over Reedsport. And Monroe on the road at Toledo gets the dub 68-52. Over to the girls, Oakland wins at Reedsport as well in a tight one though, 48-46. And Monroe again also sweeping as well the final over in Toledo 60-30. Oak Ridge versus Central, both for boys and girls games. We're still waiting on those scores. However, if you happen to know what that final score is, please give us a shout or shoot us an email. We'd like to get you updated on that. Head down to 1A now, Elkton versus Myrtle Point. The Bobcats defeat the Elks 57 to 15, and the New Hope Christian wins over Yonkala 40 to 18. Over to the boys, Elkton 54, Myrtle Point 31, and New Hope Christian 55, Yonkala 17. Girls ball now, Riddle falls to Camas Valley 57 to 18, and North Douglas wins big over Powers 50 to 29. Back over on the boys' side, Camas Valley beats Riddle 75 to 50, and the North Douglas boys beat Powers 72 to 42. When we come back, our play of the week, plus we've got Oregon and Oregon State women's basketball highlights. That's coming up next on the Round Ball Wrap. This is gonna be a lot of fun. Kimmel's got late night. Yeah, I love coming here. On lock. Get up, come on, let's see it. Watch me for an hour and the other 23 are yours. Jimmy Kimmel Live, weeknights on ABC. For generations, hardworking people have relied on Ford F-Series trucks, making them America's best-selling trucks 47 years straight. This is the next generation of built Ford Tough. Money isn't interested in the fact that you dream of going to Greece. And it doesn't pace at night wondering how you'll pay for braces three times. The point is, money without people is just money. Only people can use it to run the family ranch, buy their first house, or adopt a happy old dog. 
To us, the powerful thing about money isn't money at all. It's helping you harness the power of yours. On Point. People are the point. The half yearly sale is the biggest sale of the season at Birch's Shoes and Birch's Shoe Outlet, and it's going on now. Hi, I'm Liz Kelly, and if you love a great deal, this sale is for you. Shop early for the best selection and save big on boots, dress, casual, and athletic footwear for men, women, and kids. Huge discounts are throughout both stores on quality footwear for the whole family. Hurry in, the half yearly sale ends soon. Birch's Shoes, believe in fit. For generations, hardworking people have relied on Ford F-Series trucks, making them America's best-selling trucks 47 years straight. This is the next generation of built Ford Tough. When severe weather hits, depend on KEZI 9 News and Storm Tracker 9 weather coverage to keep your family safe. Tracking severe weather across Western Oregon. And the impacts where you live, keeping you ahead of the storms. Every day on KEZI 9 News. Play of the Week on KEZI 9 News is sponsored by Abbey's Legendary Pizza. Well, time for Abby's legendary play of the week. We talked about this. I went to three games. You went to three games yep. recently. One of them. Uh, that's not where the play of the week no. was. So I'll no. let you, I'll let no, you take that. No, thank you. Yeah, the play of the week coming courtesy of Philomath. We're going to take you right now to that play of the week. The Philomath girls getting the job done here tonight. Ball is loose, and it ends up finding its way out to Emily Tonasilla who lets it fly from three range off the glass, back into the net. That's what I would call a play of a week right there, Nick. Hey, look, it might have been nighttime, but the bank, I guess, is always open in Philomath. Congratulations. Let's head to the college level. Oregon women on the road taking on eighth-ranked Stanford. Cardinal opened this game on a 20 to nothing run. Chance Gray, she led the way with 19 points. Over to the second quarter, Priscilla Williams misses the three. Filipina Che there for the rebound to Sophia Bell for three. The Ducks were down 17 at half. Over to the fourth quarter now, this one well out of range for the Ducks. Sarah Rambis, the layup. Stanford leads wire to wire over the Ducks. That final score, Stanford 88, Oregon 63. Beeve still in search of their first Pac-12 road win, taking on Cal, and it's Reagan Beers getting the job done tonight as she goes up and in for the easy score. Beavers in the lead early, but that wouldn't last too long as Oregon State would actually be playing catch-up for the majority of this game until Lily Hansford starts the rallying cry for Oregon State. Beeves getting back into this one, chipping away, and there's Tamia Gardner chipping away even more at some of this lead as Oregon State is actually able to complete the comeback in classic faction in Northern California as the Beavs get the dub 71 to 64. This Beavers team, Nick, has really been impressive this season. That's their 15th win of the season. They're now 4-2 and two in Pac-12 play. I think this is a team that Corvallis and, frankly, those even across the state can really be excited for this year. It's going to be a fun one on Sunday. Cameron Brink, the two-time All-American yep. for Stanford, did go out of the Oregon game. She was back on the bench. Not quite sure if that was just because that game was out of reach, but that Reagan beers cameron Brink matchup is going to be a fun one be a lot on of fun. Sunday. But before we get there, we mentioned a lot of those games that were canceled. South Eugene boys is in action tomorrow, yep. and so is North Eugene. Sheldon's in action. And then the great matchup, West Albany, South Albany, boys and girls will have highlights for you so we kind of have like a round ball wrap 2.0 coming up on saturday for brett taylor i'm nick ursini thanks for joining us we'll see you next week